This week on Barbell Shrug, we find out what Jason Khalifa is doing to prepare for the 2014 games. Uh -oh. <laughs> Coming for you, Rich. I got a point to make. Oh, I got a point to make. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys, That's welcome right. to Barbell Shrug. I'm Mike Bledsoe here with uh, Doug and Chris Moore, hanging out with Jason Kalipa in San Jose, California, Ooh, at uh, Jason Kalipa's house. Uh, before we get into the deep discussion about who is Jason, uh, we're, I want you to go to barbellshrug.com and sign up for the newsletter because we're doing a lot of stuff, doing a little bit of traveling. If you want to be updated on uh, the things we're doing and uh, – the places we're going, and if you want to meet up maybe or something like that, you should probably put your name in that newsletter thing. And what else will they get? They'll get the eight snatch mistakes that I did with uh, Rich Froning, actually. So we roped him into that. His shirt was off. You can see too. Rich with his shirt off. So Not that you haven't before. He's <laughs> like always that's hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> Every picture I've ever seen of Rich has got maybe his shirt get, off. Maybe we get Jason <laughs> to take his shirt off. I, I saw the Instagram picture, and let me say... I don't know if that was real or just did you do you guys push that little button that makes everything more defined? It's like this is some bullshit Instagram <laughs> that's, that, filtering here. Yeah, that's that's black and white, right? That black and white yeah, just man. makes you look yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you uh do you let up in the off season before you get into like the is it do you get like leaner coming up to the games or do you put on some uh fat? No, nah, no, nah, so like no, nah, no nah, man. When when do you get fat? That's what I want to know. <laughs> He's already going to a, a this is the best, conversation, this is the milk best, phase best conversation interview ever. When do you get fat, Jason? Yeah. <laughs> so after the games, where I take some time off, I chill, you know? And then, uh, but like, I, I mean, like, a lot of people say you're going to finish the games and then take time off. But for me, it's like, I really enjoy this stuff. So I, I would do it either way. So like, after the games, I left for a week to um, Antigua, like a Caribbean island. And like, I was like, all right, I'm not going to train at all. I'm going to let my body heal. But like, I started to hurt even more because I wasn't training. It's like almost like a, a racehorse. You know, like they're just used to fucking, they're just used to moving. Yeah. And all of a sudden you stop moving. And she's like, oh, so I started moving again. I felt good again. And um, so really the training is still there, but the, um, but the mentality is a little different. So like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to back off a little bit. And then now I'm training again. So today is uh, September 20, whatever. Uh, I'm training again hard for Team USA. It was at the end of October. So I'm training like for a month hard. Not that I haven't been training before, but just a little bit more low key. Then after the Team USA, I'll go back down and train just nice and chill. And then I'll ramp it back up, you know, beginning of the year, January, February time frame. Cool. Before we get too far in it, can you give us like a, a brief history of how you got into CrossFit, maybe what you were doing before and kind of uh, what brought you to where you are now? Yeah, so like, um, yeah, I got into CrossFit in 2006. I was introduced. I really got into it in 2007. I competed in the 2008 CrossFit Games. I won those. Um, Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Shortly after that, uh, like a week later, so I was graduating from college in July. The Games were in July. So I graduated from college. I so you, were, you started doing CrossFit, and you're like, there was this competition coming up. You're like, oh, whatever, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I've been keeping up with it, and I've been, you know, I've been keeping up with it for about six months or a year. I've been doing CrossFit really religiously. And then I, I went in, I heard about the CrossFit Games, I competed in it, I won it. And um, I had already made a decision to open up a gym after I graduated from college. But that kind of helped solidify, like, yeah, this is what I want to do for a living. And so I opened up my first gym in 2008. And then... Um, 2009, I competed in the CrossFit Games again. Took fifth place, won the Spirit of the Games Award. That was cool, that was a big honor for me. 2010, I competed again. Took 16th that year. Uh, 2011, I took seventh. 2012, I took fifth. 2013, I took second. And I've been nominated on Team USA twice. So. Dude, let me, like the first thing that popped in my mind <clears throat> after this year's games was winning in 2008 and staying in the mix in 2013 is something to be really fucking proud of I think <laughs> I gotta give you props for that cause I'm trying to think of who else who else did well initially and then as this thing exploded 
is still in the mix to to take the prize. I think I can only think of you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, realistically. I, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I'm, I'm just trying to be consistent, right? And uh, I've said it once, and I'll say it again. It's like in my life, what I'm trying to be is the consistent guy. You know, the guy when you look back, like, damn, that guy came and he came for a long time and he worked hard for a long period of time. He didn't just have one good year or one, you know, one amazing year and, and then dropped off. But I think over time you'll watch and the people who will be remembered are the people who are consistent over the span of years. And Rich Froning is a great example of that, you know? He's been consistent for years and no one could ever doubt his work capacity. No one could ever doubt his abilities because he's proven it over so many years. And you know, I'm honored to be, you know, there in the beginning when we were on dirt mm-hmm. and then now here we are on ESPN and Oh yeah, to, ESPN for the not ESPN two. Mm-hmm. ESPN. ESPN. Right. Yeah. And just to watch that progression, you know, it's like it's crazy. I mean it's a good thing and it's it it kinda it, it's it's humbling at the same time because I got into it I got into it when it wasn't the cool thing. Now more and more people are getting into it and uh, you know, I think I think we could talk about kind of why some people are getting into the sport and um I think some people have the wrong impression about the sport and they need to kind of look deep down why they're doing it. Um, Check themselves, you're recommending, before yeah, they riggedy wreck yeah, themselves. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. When I got into it right in 2008, it, was, it, it wasn't the cool thing to do. Mm-hmm. Hi, babe. Um, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> this is Kalipa. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, make sure she doesn't hit your car. <laughs> Don't hit my rental Kia. Yeah. That thing's green. <laughs> so you know when I got into it, right? Like I just did it for the love. Right. There was no money. I, I won eighteen hundred bucks that year, you know. And uh, I did it for me. I did it for myself. I did it for to, to prove to myself that I wanted to. Compete. What better reason is it to start anything? That's it. I mean, right? you know, that's, that's it. And you know now over the years, you know people are getting more and more into it, and they're seeing some money, they're seeing some prizes, they're seeing some stuff, and so they're getting into it more as a sport than in terms of a fitness program that gets you really healthy. And then as a byproduct, you can still throw it out with your friends and then go compete in the CrossFit Games. And it's a difference in the mindset, and I'm watching it, and um, I think people just need to be careful of it because I think some people are losing focus of why we do what we do. At the end of the day, we're trying to be really fit and trying to live longer and uh, help a lot of people in the byproduct. And I think if you're so wrapped up in competing, 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 and you're so focused on it, you don't have fun. And when you don't have fun, you're never going to stick with it, you know? Yeah, so, uh, you, think, you think maybe some people are doing some damage to themselves by trying to be like pursuing the performance aspect <laughs> and kind of leaving the fitness, <laughs> like the health behind? I mean, you know, I mean, well, what's your perspective on that? No, my perspective is just, you know, at the end of the day, CrossFit's not making people millionaires, right? CrossFit games are only going to be able to support people from a, from a, from a, from a you're not going to be a professional CrossFitter only a very select few will be able to live off just that. Right. And so if that's not your bread and butter, then you should be enjoying what you're doing. Like for me, every year I go into the CrossFit Games, it's like, hey, why am I here? Well, I'm not here for the money. Mm-hmm. You're not guaranteed anything. And I'm sure it's not gonna be able to pay my bills if I don't take top whatever. And I'm not doing it for the fame. I mean, I've already been around for a while. I'm doing it for me. And and I think other people need to do it for themselves too. Because when shit gets tough at the CrossFit Games, which it will, I guarantee you, no amount of money, no amount of fame will ever um, get you through that. You know, that's something intrinsically developed inside of you that you want to win. You want to do it for yourself. And uh, you can see that in a lot of guys who do well is it's something ingrained in them. They're not doing it for anything else but themselves. Yeah, we were talking to Shana Alverson, and she was saying that people think it's a lot more glamorous than it probably really is. Like, they think it's just, you know, you're on TV all the time and everyone loves you, <laughs> but, like, the day-to-day grind isn't that glamorous. Just training by yourself in your garage three times a day, four times a day, or, or whatever you're doing isn't really that glamorous. Most of the time, you're not in front of a camera and, and people aren't, like, showering you with praise. You're just grinding it out and killing yourself all alone. Right. Right. And even when you're on TV and even when you're on cameras and stuff like that, it's like, you know, it's stressful. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it goes back to like, why are you doing it? Well, some people want to do it now because they see people getting popular and they want to have more, you know, followers on Instagram. It's fucking worst reason to do anything. Yeah. And And it's the worst reason ever, you know, and it's just like follow your passion, you know, and like my passion is fitness. Like I was thinking about this year and I was talking to my wife. I was like, you know, what if I don't compete next year? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like. Even if I don't compete next year, I'm still going to be doing exactly what I'm doing right here, right now. Like, I'd be in my garage throwing down because this is what I love to do. Your training wouldn't change. My training really wouldn't change. And it's like, that's when you know you're doing something special is because I'm making a living off what I love to do from owning gyms.
games mm. and I'm passionate about it. Like I wouldn't have it any other way, you know? Yeah. And that's did something did that's it become awesome. your passion or was fitness always your passion even before CrossFit? Yeah. So, I mean, a little bit about me, you know, I worked at a, a Globo gym throughout high school, mm-hmm. a conventional gym, like a, you know, like a 24 hour fitness type deal, but it wasn't, it was a privately owned one. Mm. And I worked there and I worked the front desk and, um, from the front desk, I was a sophomore and then I became a junior and on my off season from football and different sports, I started working a little bit more at night and I started doing sales. Mm. And so when I went to college, then I worked full time and then went to school full time all Mm. throughout college. And, um, that's really where I got like my business sense from is, is from doing all this different sales stuff there. Putting in hours. Yeah, I was putting in a lot of hours of, mm-hmm. of, of really learning how to negotiate with people, learning how to talk to people. And that's where I got my love of fitness. But what I realized is like I'd sell people a gym membership and I didn't never felt a um, hole inside. Like mm-hmm. I'd sell some guy a $25 a month membership. I'd make a $50 commission, whatever. And I'd walk away and I'd be like, you know, what did that do for me? Mm-hmm. I just got that guy's money. Yeah, I made 50 bucks, but I know he's not going to come in. I know he's not going to get results. What am I really doing? You know what I mean? And at the time it was just a job. But then it's like, what do I want to do for a career? Mm-hmm. And I knew I wanted to get in the fitness industry. And that's when I found CrossFit. It's like, this is it. This is something that's going to get people results. And I can make a living off of it. Right. But I could go home at night and put my, you know, rest knowing that I'm helping people mm-hmm. and not just taking their money. Yeah. More fulfilling. Yeah. How did you find CrossFit? So a friend of mine at the time, we were working together at the, at the conventional gym. His name is Austin Begeebing. He's now the owner of CrossFit Malpitas. He introduced it to me and, um, yeah, just never looked back since. Do you remember your first wad? Yeah, it was Fran. Yeah, of course. Oh, nasty. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, so Fran's 21, 15, 9 thrusters and pull-ups and uh, I couldn't do it. With what was the, the time, man? What was the time? So it took me like nine <laughs> something, but here's the deal. <laughs> I didn't do Makes it. Makes me feel better about my first one. Jesus. But, no, here's the thing. I do a jumping pull-ups. Two for one. So did I, yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so after the first round, I couldn't get through the 21 with pull-ups because I was just doing the strict pull-ups and I, I just wasn't very good with that. And so my guy, the guy who was coaching me, made me do two for one. So I did, you know, 42, you right. know, whatever. 42. 30. I can't do 18. math. I was, a dude, <laughs> I was a dude to actually standing. I was hoping someone would jump in with the math for me. Yeah. What the hell? When you, when you get to standing on a plyometric box, so the bar is starting right at your forehead, and you're just jumping with all you've got just to get your nose above it, that's yeah. when you know you're really <laughs> tired. Right. You're like, Jesus, I can't even do this. So you must have come out of kind of like the, the corporate fitness, or not corporate fitness, but more, uh, global gym fitness, bodybuilding type world, and you were used to doing very strict movements, no momentum, you know, strict pull-ups, for right. example, and then you just, you just fried on that first set yeah it was just done you know and that's kind of like my background you know for people who are watching this this show you know a lot of people that come from this conventional background and i'm as big of a guy you know i was as much into that as anybody is i mean i was mm-hmm. the conventional gym guy mm-hmm. buys and tries back and buys your leg extent. <laughs> i mean you name it right 30 minutes of cardio i mean that was me Word, man. um and i did it for a long time yeah and even to the point where i had, I had debated about doing like a bodybuilding competition, debated, never did. Damn, and uh, you've been we could like hunt down uh, Kalipa in this house, dude. dude. Kalipa in a right. bikini, man. That's what I want to say. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Is it bronze in your in your medicine cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but you know, after I found CrossFit, it just put things in a different perspective for mm. me. You know, I looked at fitness more as a um, as a way of. Uh, functional application of it compared to isolation mm-hmm. and I was just uh, mesmerized by some of the stuff man just how how good I could be at the gym putting a pin in something and all of a sudden I have to connect the bots and my body just couldn't connect it mm-hmm. and you know for those people who are doing you know just do regular conventional gym so that's fine but it's like you can't work the sum of its parts. You gotta work it all together. Mm. And so it's like, you can't get better at squatting without squatting. You can't just do leg extension, hamstring curls, and whatever else, and expect right. to get better. You gotta put that bar on your back and kind of connect all the dots. Yeah. And uh, that's what I was missing. Do you think focusing on muscle mass initially was actually a good thing in the long run? Um, I don't know. I think I'm, that's a great question. I mean, I think genetically, I'm, I'm already a bigger person, so I think having that already helped. Mm-hmm. And I was playing football. I learned some explosive lifts, but they didn't teach me the type of technique that I really, you know, know now. Right. Got that gangster football player hand clean. Exactly. Form. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Slam it off your thighs. <laughs> As yeah. if doing the movement itself is all that mattered, not how you do the movement. That's what we were taught in college. I'm slamming in your thighs. <laughs> Get that shit up. <laughs> yeah, I remember one time before a football game, one of my coaches is like, "He's crap. I haven't researched his new theory." That uh, basically you wanna you wanna, <laughs> you wanna that's how it all starts. You wanna like uh, 
Shock the system, right? So, <laughs> muscle confusion. So, no warm up, no nothing. So, we're about to get on the bus to go to a game. Yeah. We walk into the locker room and they load us up to like almost a one rep max deadlift. No warm up, just pull that shit off the floor. That's a good and idea. Then go, go on the bus and go, <laughs> and go play. Well, that that is, like, that's fantastic. He probably read like Charlie Francis shit where he had like Ben Johnson do like uh, max effort quarter squats and then go sprint for the contrast. Not realizing that maybe your team wasn't on the caliber of fucking Ben Johnson at his prime. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, you know, yeah. like warm up and stuff like that, you know, but who knows? Hey, well, he, he read a bad PAP article. That's what it was. was it, what does that mean? PA, that's what's a big, big fancy never term mind. that you just brought up there. Sorry. Confusion You're not even going to talk about it now? <laughs> oh, I, I, you can, you can shout, Google it. Shout out to Lauren Chu. Yeah, that's right. Post-activation Post potentiation. There you go. Post-activation yeah. potentiation. You can Google that. We did a nasty study one time where we had muscle biopsies taken out and... That was just like a piece too. of muscle about the size of a number two pencil eraser. Yeah. So they, they put a big needle in your leg. They chop off a piece of muscle. They take it out. We went and did seven sets of triples for for power cleans at 80% of our max. And then they pulled out another big piece of muscle. And then we did eight more sets. And then they pulled out another big piece Into of muscle. In the same hole, right? In, yeah, in, in the same thing. All I know is I ended up with like nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got stuck nine and times. Then, and then we did max <clears throat> isometric deadlifts uh, right at like right below um you know the top of the movement and just pulled as hard as we could for five seconds and they were looking to see if if doing the max isometric pulls before the cleans activated our muscle fibers to an extent where we could pull harder than not doing it or something like that but it was a crazy study we got a lot of it on film i like stuff like that i mean just trying new things and seeing what yeah. happens right and the quantifiable data point like hey look we're looking at this muscle whatever i mean that's what's cool about crossfit it's all quantifiable right i mean yeah if you do a workout mm -hmm. today and you do the next you do it tomorrow and you get better time well you know you're getting you know a little bit more fit you know, something improved somewhere there you go yeah. So the missing component of any program is if you're measuring things and things are moving forward, you're doing just fine, bro. That, you're that's doing exactly just fine. That's exactly right. You know what I mean? You were talking earlier about kind of like a longevity model for competing. So yeah. is, is there something that you feel like you're doing that's different than other athletes that are allowing you to have that longevity? Oh, Besides man. the voodoo challenge. Is this like yeah. Russian-style CrossFit? I mean, no. <laughs> you know, so this is going to be my seventh year of the CrossFit Games coming up. And... Um, I've been pretty consistent over those seven years, but it's like, I think the big, big thing is, and I was having this debate the other day with someone about programming, mm -hmm. and everybody wants to know the best program. Everybody wants to know, what program should I follow? Should I follow this? Should I follow that? At the end of the day, your program's only as good as what you're going to put into it. Mm -hmm. You know, I could give you exactly what I do every day, and I'm still going to beat you because I'm going to go in there and I'm going to work harder at those particular That's events. That's exactly right? true, man. And, yeah. and, and, you know, I think people are, are trying to find this special voodoo like training. At the end of the day, all you got to do is do CrossFit because CrossFit mm -hmm. works mm -hmm. and then hit it hard. And, you know, I think that goes back to um, this longevity piece is like, I think there's really some important characteristics. I think you need to have, a, a, you know, I think you need to have fun. And I think you need to work hard. And I think if you have fun, you work hard. I think you're, that's a recipe for success. <laughs> that's yeah, right. yeah, sure. Yeah, my, my high school football coach said that the best training program is the one that you believe in, which there's levels of truth to that, but but that'll take you a long way. If you think it's the best program ever and you <clears> fucking <throat> hit it hard and you put your heart and soul into it, you'll crush. That's well, it. It's, like a, it's yeah. like a spider graph with all these things around it. If you, the more balance you can get between, look, just simple, well-reasoned programming, nothing fancy, because the best athletes in the world don't really do things that are crazy fancy. I mean, watch what like the top-level Olympic weightlifters do. It's all things you've seen. Right. It's just that lifestyle, belief, fun, you know, recovery, all those things make a comprehensive picture. And the thing you're doing, the numbers, the math, is just one tiny segment of that. People will just lose sight of it. Yeah. And, you know, like the thing about programming, like I said, I mean, whoever's watching this, like they get, they get so wrapped up in like, okay, this is, this is, this is, this, this percentage, this is, it's like any Joe Schmo mm. can put paper numbers on a paper, anybody. But it's all about how you approach that workout mm. and what intent you have for it. And, and the environment you're in, and, and that's about it. It's how are you approaching it, what are you trying to get away from it, right? If I put Fran down, or if I put five minutes of handstand walking, what is my mentality as a coach for this athlete, or as an athlete, what is my mentality? And it takes a while to develop some of this stuff, like you can't just wake up one day and know your body so well, but if you've been in the sport for a long time, you're, you know kind of what you need. But if you're programming as a coach, you want to have an intention and a focus behind each workout and then be able to articulate that to your athletes so that they could get more effective out of that workout and not just think about it as 2159 thrusters pull-ups, but think about it more as, okay, 
my win for today is if I get the first set unbroken. That's my win. Um, or only take three reps, you know, only do sets of five or less or whatever. Just have some kind of game plan, some kind of focus. I think that's really important. Yeah, I was talking to Doug just the other day and um, sometimes I program like 80 or 90 percent effort. And I was talking about how like sometimes it takes an athlete like three months of doing those where they have to approach 80 percent, 90 percent, 100 percent several times before they even know what that means. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to try to pace. And I was actually reading something on um, the NC Labs. Yeah, you, 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 yeah. you like that? Yeah. I, uh, I, <laughs> I, I don't know what it is, but I'm excited to hear about I, it. Yeah, from from that reaction. Fuck those guys. Are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, they our friends? No, we, we, like, we like those guys. I was just trying to join the conversation. I'm not trying to be cool like anybody. Sorry, man. Chris. I didn't, I didn't include that website in the interview press. This is like the second time <laughs> you're like, just naming you know, fucking letters. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm always going to leave something out in, in Chris Moore's interview prep so that like we can just so, so I can say something my confusion ridiculous. makes me look like an asshole and a couple people laugh at it I'm just excited I to have interview great, prep yeah. now so wait what, what is NC Labs <laughs> <laughs> I'm just excited to prepare so, <laughs> go so ahead and tell us about it so the NC Lab you know the original tagline was like where the best get better but I think the new tagline should be you know fitness you know returning fitness to fun or or you know a place where you know, bringing CrossFit back to being fun or something like that, whatever you want to call it. I just think it's a place where it, it talks about the mentality between a workout mm -hmm. and the idea that CrossFit and fitness in general should be fun. Mm -hmm. Fitness for years has been something that people do as an outlet, right? Something they do to enjoy it and as a byproduct, get more healthy. We, you know, people go for a run because they enjoy it and they want to get more healthy. They know the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, CrossFit now is a fitness program. That's what it is. But people now, they don't really look at it as a fitness program. They look at it as a sport. And it is a sport too. Mm -hmm. But first and foremost, it's a fitness program. Mm -hmm. And for those people who are so involved as a sport, they're so <coughs> caught up in it that they lose focus of just having fun and understanding the bigger picture. And so NC Lab, what that's about is is it's about one, it's about how to approach workouts, how to do workouts, mm -hmm. but it's also just about like just growing out, just having a good time <laughs> with it, you know what I mean? And not taking it so seriously and just hitting it hard. Well, dude, I, so I think wait, I really, go ahead, Doug. Big picture, what is it though? You kind of talked about kind of what, so it, big what, picture, what it's, it's programming. So, so big picture, okay. it's programming, but uh -huh. it's programming with a twist in the sense that one is the people who are programming it yeah. are actually doing the workouts. This Which is, this is an online thing. Yeah, you can go we just do workouts up. Yeah, NC, okay. um, NCC Lab, NCCF Lab dot com. We <laughs> am, I NCC, am I going to tell you the name of your website? Yeah, NCC. <laughs> we just started like a week ago, but you know, I mean, here's the thing about it: is like we we program the workouts. Like for example, I was in my garage the other day. Mm. I walked a mile with a sled behind my back. I finished the sled. Your I got on my you. yeah, my meters <laughs> let me. I got on my phone <laughs> and was like, "Yo, this is Jason. I just got done walking a mile." Tomorrow, if you do this, here's what you need to think about. Da 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 da. da. That's so I'm really talking. Annoying. I'm talking about my programming, right. but I'm actually doing the program. I'm not. I'm not just some guy who's writing numbers down on a workout. Right. I'm actually sitting here in the lab, right, mm -hmm. doing yeah. the workouts, seeing right. if it fucking works. You know seeing what if it feels works. like. And if it works, shoot it out to the public. If it doesn't work, then move on. And and that's the big picture. It's like the lab is a place where a bunch of workouts get done. We do a lot of stuff. Some of it's great. Some of it's not so great. Right. Take the great stuff, send out to the public. That's hey, science. try this. Fucking scientific method. That's all it is. Do you think there's a little too much of a resurgence in like the no pain, no gain mentality and cross Like people think it's just about fucking torching yourself and then and feeling the endorphin rush of that and losing sight of fun, of balance, of progression, of, of actual training? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, um, I mean, well, cross is going to. It's gonna be a little painful if you're, you know, if you want to get results, which is good. A little bit's but, good, but I think, I think, I think, I think. Here's the thing: I love CrossFit, and I like pushing myself with other people around me and just having a good time. Like after I'm done high fiving a bro and just chilling there, just be like, damn, that thing was hard. But that's what it's all about: is like pushing yourself with others and having a good time while you're doing it, and not pushing yourself for the sake of pushing yourself because you want to get better to win. Like you're just doing it for yourself to find distinction. To, yeah, right. You're doing it for yourself to get more fit, to get better, and to have a good time. And as a byproduct, you're gonna do good at the CrossFit Games. Not so. I need to train for the games. I need to do this today. I need to do this today. Oh my god, I feel like shit, but I'm still gonna do this today because I have to do this today. It's like, no, dude, take a day off, chill, come back tomorrow, mm -hmm. hit it hard with your friends, and. Can I put that on a t-shirt, that e phrase? easy advice to give other people. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I mean, but it's the truth. It's just, I don't yeah. know, man. I just see it so often. So many people are so gung-ho to get to the games. They're so motivated. Right. And I love it. And their passion is just amazing. 
but they need to just take a step back and understand mm-hmm. that the games is not what defines them. Mm-hmm. There's other things that define them. Maybe you're a father, maybe you're a business owner, maybe you're whatever. And the games are just one thing you want to try and accomplish in your life, mm-hmm. but don't get too wrapped up in it because only 1% of 1% go there. And so just have fun in the experience. If you're not having fun, I guarantee you'll be in here for, you know, you'll be a top guy at regionals for a year or two and then you're gone. Mm-hmm. You know, it reminds me of the best line ever. I was listening to uh, an interview with Josh Homme. The front man of the best band ever exists, Queens of Stone Age. And somebody <laughs> asked him, you know, if a little, a little kid wants to learn how to play guitar, Josh, you're a fucking badass guitar player. What do you tell him? He goes, you know, I tell him something simple, man. You know, he gets that groovy fucking voice on. He goes, if you if you're expecting anything out of music, you expect too much. He goes, I do this shit because I love it first and foremost. Wherever it takes me, that's cool. But I'm just gonna play because I love playing. That simple little phrase perfectly captures everything. You expect anything out of this shit, you expect too much. Right. That keeps you balanced. Yeah. The only thing you can expect from Cross is you're gonna get more fit. Yeah. That's it. That's and, a pretty good trade. And that's a huge trade. Yeah. But uh, if you expect you're going to go to the games, you, I mean, you know, I guess call me a little old school, right? But I just want to, I want to kind of remember the days where people were just doing this stuff because they're trying to get more fit. They're trying to live a healthier lifestyle. They're trying to help people and they're trying to, you know, c- compete. <clears throat> but that's not all they're thinking about. That's not what's keeping them up at night. You know, that, that's, that's one of the things I see in the sport. Yeah, Jason speaking OG of, Kalipa. Speaking of helping people, you help a lot of people. You have multiple gyms, and you're you're doing all kinds of new stuff more in the, in the business world all the time. It sounds like you're busy. You're busier in business than you are with your training. Yeah, debatably. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple of facets of my life, right? So I, I teach level one seminars and coaches prep course around the world for CrossFit HQ. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, I'm a you know father and a husband, and and uh, I have our own gyms, NorCal CrossFit, and then I also compete. So I kind of as as deep into CrossFit as you can get, right? I mean, I'm all the different facets of it, mm-hmm. and um, so we have um, we have a, we have a, you know we have affiliates here in San Jose, mm-hmm. and then we have you know some up the Bay Area, and then really we're pushing hard with this corporate thing, and it's been awesome. So we've been able to open up some affiliates with Hitachi or HGST Hitachi Global Storage, and uh, it's been awesome. So we have two locations with them in San Jose mm-hmm. that we service about two thousand employees. And we get some great participation there. They're actual affiliates. They're real gyms. Their people are just throwing down hard. And then now they saw such success there that we're moving. Uh, so now we opened up a, little, uh, a satellite one in Minnesota, Colorado, and we did Malaysia. And then we're doing Singapore, Philippines, Thailand, and, Japan, and uh, China. Fuck, man. <laughs> Jesus. Maybe yeah, fucking we, asshole. I'm just sitting here talking. I got to get yeah. up things. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, we were talking a little bit yeah. about that. We touched on it before we even got on the podcast. And it was just, it was really cool to see how excited you were to be able to reach that many people across because you really see it as a way to change people's lives and change, change like the corporate environment or, you know, corporate fitness, you know, you, you were talking about how like it's always been the same and now you want to like shake it up. Yeah. I mean, it's going to revolutionize it. I mean, here's the thing. You look at certain things in the world and everything's kind of made some moves with the exception of maybe like a microwave. That's kind of been the same for a long time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They got, so they got well. more options now, more buttons and shit. Though. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like technology wise, ah! You know, whatever. You know, maybe maybe airline travel, kind of the same thing. But it's like everything else. You know, it's coming up. You know, we're making progress in certain areas, and we're making progress in fitness with CrossFit. I mean, we're seeing. Jesus, <laughs> <Mike's> <laughs> right. Yeah, right. I mean, I don't know her. You know, in CrossFit, we're seeing progress like nothing else has ever done. I mean, we're watching people make moves. Mm-hmm. I mean, every single day, I receive an email saying that CrossFit's changed their lives every day. Mm-hmm. And you know, now you take the corporate environment. And for years and years and years, they've been on the ellipticals and been on the treadmills. <laughs> and, you know, is that giving their employees more fit? Sure. Arguably. Sure. Why not? But what it's not doing is not developing a sense of community. And if anybody knows about CrossFit, CrossFit is a great um, fitness program, but it's even a better community builder. And that's where I think it's going to revolutionize the corporate model is because in corporations, what are they trying to do? Well, A, they're trying to reduce healthcare costs and they're trying to do all that stuff by getting their employees more fit. Mm-hmm. Sure. But what they're also trying to do is develop a sense of community. Mm -hmm. And no better way to do that than to throw down with other people. I mean, I've seen it firsthand, the president of the company, the CFO, the you name it, just throwing down with normal folks and no one really cares what their titles are. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they don't even know. It strips the hierarchy out of this organization. Exactly. I like the story you told about the two guys that worked together for like eight years and never really talked to each other. And then finally, because of CrossFit, they've actually talked on a daily basis and they got to know everyone like (laughs) that they see, but don't ever really talk to because they train together. Isn't that mind blowing? I mean, so these two guys for eight years, They'd, they'd go to the same gym together. So the, Hitachi's had a gym. HGST has had a gym. 
but you know, one guy gets on a treadmill, the other guy gets on a treadmill. It's kind of awkward if you talk to each other, right? You're kind of wearing your headphones, kind of like, why are you talking to me? Why are you looking at me? It's like it's like oh, in a yeah. urinal. Where you're, yeah, it's like yeah. Being, yeah. Like, <laughs> if you come to the bathroom and stand right next to me and take a piss. And there's three other urinals, bro. Come on, bro. It's a little weird. <laughs> yeah. and we're crossing streams. And you're talking to me, right? Yeah. And, and, and so it's like you know. But how does that benefit the company? Right. It doesn't benefit the company at all because now you're 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 you know getting people as individuals instead of bringing them together as a community. And at the end of the day, what is a company? A company is nothing more than a community. And and you see that with all these different companies in our area. You know, you got the Facebooks, the Googles, the different companies where they have these new standing stations. And there's no longer cubicles. It's mm. all just open floor standing rooms because it's better communication. It's better flow. That same thing goes across CrossFit. So just as the cubicles are gone and the offices are gone, well, guess what? Their fitness program needs to change as well to a more integrated community-based fitness program just like CrossFit. If you're a gym owner out there, like if you were going to give advice to a gym owner that wanted to start maybe a corporate program in their town, so like, so our town, Memphis, Tennessee, we really don't have any businesses that are taking advantage of CrossFit or trying to, trying to work with a, one of the CrossFit affiliates to do some corporate stuff. What would you tell like a gym owner that wanted to get into that, like how they could approach that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the first step is, you know, I've, I've tried from the bottom up. It's tough. So we have corporate accounts to a bunch of different companies. But from the top down, is a lot easier. So what I would do is step number one is offer really good coaching at your affiliate, right? Offer the best coaching. Be the best affiliate. Be the best. And all of a sudden, you, you get people kind of coming in. And you start finding out things about them, right? You're not trying to find out things about them. You just find out. Hey, this guy's the C-level. This guy's vice president level. This guy's this. You start getting to know him. Boom, all of a sudden this guy sees value in your program and then and then what do you do? You start talking about, you know, hey, can I bring your HR, your benefits director in? Can I take her through a workout? Just explain her what's going on and then you just start those relationships up. And, you know, my secret is like you show value in what you're doing. Um, you don't ask for any money. You just, hey, I want to show you guys what I can offer your company because I believe we have the best fitness program on the planet and I believe we're going to develop your sense community. Let me show you and then we'll talk about how to implement it at your company. In that scenario, mm-hmm. it's probably good to be come across as professional as possible. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. like I mean, sometimes like, you walk into some CrossFit gyms and it's like if you get the president of some company coming in, they're not going to be like, yeah, this is what needs to be in my company. They may like it, but you know, you might have a hard time starting that relationship if it's yeah. Uh, I mean, you, like need, my you need to represent gym. yourself well, right? <laughs> I mean, you, you need to represent yourself as a professional establishment, like you know, CrossFit gyms. They started out in garages. They started out in small boxes. And, you know, my first box was the size of this garage. But now they're getting more popular. And, and, and so it's turning from a hobby into a business. And we need to understand that. And, you know, businesses act a certain way and do things a certain way because it works. And I'm not saying we need to get rid of all of our old school things. You can still have all the same things. But there needs to be some sort of professionalism involved with that if you want to try and get into the corporate realm especially. I feel like focusing on the community part of it, like you were talking about, really is the key there. Like they already have a corporate fitness program. They they understand that you can reduce health care health care costs and increase productivity and all that. And that's like the same thing they've heard probably their whole career. But the community aspect of it, I feel like that's that's the key. Right. And and nothing else is as successful as CrossFit. Right. So Mm -hmm. we do for with different companies. They do yoga. They do kickboxing. They do this. They do that. Mm -hmm. Nothing is as community oriented as CrossFit mm-hmm. because it enables you to partner up with people. It enables you to get in teams. It enables you to, you know, warm up and stretch together, whatever. Whereas yoga is still an individual thing. Yeah, you're doing it in a group, but I'm not talking to anybody when I'm doing yoga. If I did, that's weird. We know you're supposed to, yeah. Right. And, <laughs> or, or kickboxing or, or any of that kind of stuff, you know, like, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe judo might be an example or jujitsu because you're rolling around with somebody. But even then, it's not, it's not as like, you know, bro friendly it's not as community oriented as CrossFit would be you know it's kind of mm-hmm. like those all those team building exercises usually they make you do and you're like fuck how how long do I gotta be here before I can leave that's usually the vibe in those team building catch your partner kind of exercises but or, CrossFit all that pretentiousness and all that fakeness is stripped away so it's like look here's a real challenge you're all gonna make it through this workout you know you got that amount of time to do it fucking team up right and it just strips away all the artificial fake plastic components of those those tests usually so what we're seeing at uh, HGST and they're the ground they're groundbreaking on this stuff so they came to us and like hey so we've been there you know a while so they just came to us last week they're like hey we want to start doing like um uh, like team building events for different units, right? So we just had our first one. A, a group of fifty people came in, and they want us to do like you know they always they spend 
literally tens of thousands of dollars in these events to bring the people together. Instead, they just come in and throw down a CrossFit workout. They get more out of that than they did going and, you know, sitting for two days in a conference room and talking about their feelings and climbing over walls and <laughs> blindfolding each other and whatever. It's a lot I mean, cheaper. And it's a lot cheaper. It's, it's I mean, you, a lot talking, fucking cheaper. you're talking about a couple hundred bucks to thousands and thousands of dollars and they get more out of it because it's real and it's not put in this, this setting where it's like, you know, like it's not put in a fake setting. It's just put in a real setting. Hey, yo, we're going to go back squat. I want to get you stronger. Let's go squat together. And I'm going to encourage you because that's what we do. And as we encourage each other, we're going to learn something about each other. Yeah. The, the goal is not trying to make force the community aspect. Like if you do some of those like team builder things, I like, I've done those team builder things in the past when I was younger, I was like, so we're supposed to become better friends now. This is, this yeah, is yeah. Yeah. really forcing awkward. you to be better friends. Hey, man, like, I don't like the this. Nazis tried to force community, man. You see what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> force community, man. It's organic. It happens. Yes. Exactly. We're not forcing anything, right? We're just, we're just like, hey, we're going to work out together. And all of a sudden, you just watch it just like, you know, people start off, they're a little timid, but mm-hmm. all of a sudden, they start getting their heart rate up, get a little sweaty, and boom, like the, the like people just start to relax and just really get to know each other. I mean, it's, it's literally mind-blowing. It's like, it's like a, you know, normally people get together and they have a few drinks and after they have a few drinks, they start mingling a little bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing. So when you, when you, when when you're doing doing fitness, you know, you get this euphoria, you get this like feeling of sensation of just like, wow, you know, I'm I'm getting better. I'm, I'm whatever. And boom, it's like, instead of drinking alcohol, I'm doing CrossFit and we're combining and it's a great fitness program. Or Jason, you, Jason, Jason, or I mean, you may go say the same thing. Uh, probably. What if you want and then <laughs> drink, you just get drink anyway. Yeah. You drink anyway. Uh, well, that was going to be my suggestion. You could like combine those two. <laughs> yeah. Maybe there's a synergistic effect there and you could be best friends with everybody in the room. <laughs> right. For a minute, drink for a minute, row for a minute, drink for a minute for 20 minutes. You die together, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to find out what Jason Kalipa eats for breakfast. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Jason Khalifa, CrossFit Games champion. Jason Khalifa, ladies and gentlemen, the 2008 CrossFit Games champion. Welcome back to Technique Quad. I'm Doug Larson with the Barbell Shrug Podcast. These are a few of our awesome faction and athletes that are volunteering for today's episode. Uh, we're going to talk about pushing the prowler. I'm going to show you a couple of different uh, intervals that I like to do. Uh, some of the intervals that I think are the most fun uh, as of pushing the prowler was, was fun at all. It's one of those things that's fun when you get done. Uh, as far as technique goes, there's two different ways you can do it. You have the, the high handles and you have the low handles. So just like pushing a car, if you saw our car push episode, I'll come around here real quick. I want to grab high on the handles here. I want to get nice and low just like this. If you look at my feet, my ankles are straight back. My feet aren't falling like this. One of the most common things I see is people run like that with my feet out. The duck foot stance that you don't want to be in when you're squatting or pushing on the ground in any, in any way. So you want to be here just like this. Butt low. Drive, drive, drive. If you want, you can kind of spin it at the end to make it easy to turn around and come back the same way. Or... Or you can push the high handles down and then come over and get nice and low and push the low handles on the way back. Okay. Uh, so that's basic technique points of pushing the prowler. Elbows locked out, hips low. Uh, just like you're, you're a football lineman and you're trying to drive someone off the line, you want to stay as low as possible. Uh, weight wise, you, know, you can go nice and light and have no bumper plates on or you can slide bumper plates on here and make it as heavy as you want to. Uh, the, the options are you know, infinite. So uh, as far as intervals, I like to do 100% full speed intervals. There's two ways that I like to do that. Uh, one is a one-to-one ratio where we have two partners. So if we have uh, the two guys come in, um, David will go ahead and push down and back, and then you guys will just switch. So push down and back, and he spins it around, or actually decides to go on the low handles. He goes down back for one, switches partners. He goes down back for one. And then they just keep switching back and forth. Again, you can load the prowler as heavy or as light as you want to. And then they can just go back and forth for more or less as many intervals as they uh, have programmed or as many intervals as you can tolerate, which is what I like to do a lot of times is just uh, do as many intervals um, as 
as the athletes feel like. You just stop whenever you feel like you're done. After you've done it a few times and you kind of understand how many intervals um, are going to work best for you, then you can start to add to it. So if you do, if you just kind of wing it to see where you're at and you do eight intervals like that, well, maybe next time you try to do nine and the next time you try to do 10. So you use the first couple times you do it to calibrate and then you can start to add volume once you've kind of tested yourself and you, and you know what you're comfortable with and what uh, potentially is too much. Uh, one of the other intervals I like to do is a two to one ratio where you have three partners. So you start with two partners on one side and then one partner on the far side of the room. And in this case, you're just gonna sprint down and switch partners. So, so go ahead and sprint down to that side. Once he sprints down, he's gonna switch. Next person's gonna come back. Then you're gonna switch again. And you're gonna continue just like this. Again, as long as you feel like you can tolerate it. Right now they're doing nice light pushes. Uh, again, you can make it as heavy or as light as you want to. Um, sometimes the lighter intervals seem like they're harder because you're moving so much faster. So again, it's, a, it's really up to you on how you want to do it. Now, I'll go ahead and take a break. Um, but that's a fun way to do it where you don't have to look at the clock. You don't have to keep, you know, keep track of your time. You're not going every minute on the minute. You're just, you know, you're going and then the next person goes, the next person goes, and then there's peer pressure on you to, to get your interval done as fast as possible because you're doing it as part of a group or as, as part of a team. So uh, those are two, two of my favorite um, interval styles to do with the Prowler. Um, you know, you can do a million different other things, but those are probably my, my top two favorite ways to do it. Uh, if, it if I'm all by myself, then I like to go every minute on the minute. I can just set up the clock on the wall to beep every minute. And then depending on how light I'm going, I'll either do just down one length on the turf uh, or I'll go down back. Again, it depends on how, light, how long your turf is and how heavy the prowler is, you know, how much you're gonna be able to do uh, with something like every minute on the minute. So uh, again, million options and don't get stuck in, in this one way, but these are a couple of my favorites. So if you have more questions about pushing the prowler or this type of interval training, uh, you can always go to barbellshrug.com and click the ask a question tab at the top of the page and we can do a technique wad on it in the future. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, me, Mike Bledsoe, here with Doug Larson, Chris Moore, hanging out in Jason Kleepa's garage gym. It's a dope garage. It's pretty legit. It's got Christmas lights. It's got it. It's jam packed full of equipment. <laughs> like I, you were saying earlier, you couldn't get another thing in here if you wanted. No, nah, I, mean, I, I ordered some jerk boxes. I got them in here. I was Where like, are you gonna put them to? I was like, nah, nah I gotta take them back. Which jerk boxes did you get? The rogue ones. So I got ro the, the wood oh, ones. Not the, yeah, not the, the rogue wood ones. Yeah. And uh, so I brought them to our gym. Oh, the the best parts this this welded squat rack you got behind it. This is old school. That's, Hell yeah, that's, 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 dope, like, that's that gangster stuff right there. Oh G, and the rings too. Yeah, we were talking a little bit in the break, and we are like, no, 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 save for the show. <laughs> talking about, like, segmenting your life, prioritizing, you know, uh, not making CrossFit your end-all, be-all, and, you know, you're a husband and a, and a father, and, and how you kind of treat that. I think, I think you, were, you were hitting some points that I think a lot of people need to hear, even if they're, whether they're a CrossFit athlete or, or not, just living life. I think it was good life advice. <laughs> good life advice. <laughs> yeah, you're it talking was. about partitioning yeah. your training and, and your family time and your business time and trying to get the most quality time in each one of those areas possible where you're not kind of blending them all together, where you're on your phone to, when, you're, when your wife's in the room and things like that. Can you go into yeah, that in detail? Yeah, I mean, like I was telling you guys, I mean, I'm, I get pulled in several different directions. You know, I compete as a professional CrossFitter. I, uh, I own um, several businesses and uh, you know I, I have my family and then I also travel for CrossFit HQ doing seminars around the world and it's really easy to let one of those things go and the question to ask myself is you know what is most important to me well they're all really important to me and so I need to I need to do my job of, of finding a good blend between those and I think it took me a while to understand this but since I had my daughter it really put things in perspective in terms of quality versus quantity and there's a lot of people out there who train for four or five hours a day and they get very little done or there's very there's a lot of people out there who spend a lot of time with their children but aren't really present mm. and i think that's something i've really been trying to work on is just being present and meaning if i come in my garage and i'm ready to hit it i'm gonna hit it for 30 40 minutes i'm gonna hit it hard i'm gonna hit it harder hard as hell mm. and then i'm gonna go back in the house and I segmented my time, my day, to allot that time to come in here and hit it. And if I segment it for the workout, I'm going to do my best effort in that, but I'm not just going to dilly-dally. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to allot some time for maybe some emails and some work stuff or some conference calls or whatever I'm doing with Asia. And that's what I'm focusing on. 
But when it comes time for the time with the family, you know, that's that's the time with the family. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to that being present. You know, if I come home and I'm going to have dinner with my family, I'm going to have dinner with my family. I'm going to take my phone, I'm going to put it on the table, put it on vibrate, and it's all good. I promise you I can eat dinner with my family and it'll be fine when I get back and I have a bunch of calls and emails. It's fine. Like, no one's going to miss me for an hour. Mm-hmm. But Jason, it's... but. The calls, the, yeah. they're there. What do I do? Yeah, I mean, and, and that's the way people get, right? Yeah. And for the longest time, I'd be like, oh, I got to have this phone on me. I got to train. I got to do this. I got to do that. But it's like, no, I do have to do those things. Mm-hmm. That's fine. But let me go ahead and segment it and think about the quality of time I'm spending at each different uh, you know, thing in my life because they're all really important to me, but I can't let one slip. Mm-hmm. Like I can't let my family time slip to train for the CrossFit Games. That's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I can't let the business go to crap because that's what's supporting my family. And so what I realized was just what's been working for me is just thinking about just really quality time. And that's 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 really my focus is kind of like doing a Metcon. You, you wouldn't put your phone on the counter and if it rang right in the middle of Metcon, you go over there and pick it up. You're, right. fo- you're focusing on working out at that time. And so the phone can wait for now. You can answer it later or they'll leave you a message or, or you can read the test a- the text afterward. But during the Metcon, you got to focus and that's how you get the most out of your workout. Same with family time. It's like AMRAP family time for an yeah. hour at the right. end of the day and then, then it's all good. What a weird, good. delicious way of putting it though, Doug. That's okay, a very weird way of doing it, but it makes total sense. Mm-hmm. You makes, I mean? yeah, you know, the sad part is some people get, would never dream of interrupting their Metcon, but we'll totally shit all over their kids daycare <laughs> thing or their, their wife's project like oh well hold on hold on let me back answer this email this is the toughest the, the most obvious things in life like have fun maybe when you train or don't ignore your kid for a fucking barbell these are the most obvious things and the hardest things to not fall into yeah it's I mean, amazing i mean those are those are just big takeaways i've been doing over the last you know because i've been really deep in this stuff for seven years now mm-hmm. and i've just learned a lot through 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 some stuff and i learned that if i'm not having fun with it i shouldn't be doing it mm-hmm. you know this is one more thing on my table i don't have to do this i choose to do this and so if i choose to do this i sure as hell better have fun doing it because there's no other reason for me to do it it's not providing for my family. I, uh, why am I doing it? I'm doing it for myself, so I better have fun because it's taken away from family time and business time. And so I need to make sure it's efficient and I have a good time doing it. I think that's really good for people to hear because I think a lot of times people think of somebody who is, you know, you're like a multitasker. You know, you've got a lot of different projects going on at the same time. And I think they, they think of that person, and, you know, you're jogging. And you're like answering phone calls and you're like eating dinner and like Sipping answering coffee. emails, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's like, you know, you watch movies or something, you know, you got this yeah. like this, you know, executive or something. And he's just never focused on anything and, and basically is always in the gray zone is like what we like to call it. Like you're in the gray zone. If, Who's we? if you're not you? focused, Doug and I, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doug and I have our own little terms. Gray zone. And, yeah. We call it the gray zone. Like if you're not focused on is that one, you want one, one business posi- memoirs. We stole that. That'll, from, that'll, we stole that from Tony Schwartz to, okay. uh, yeah. to give some credit. <laughs> yeah. Well, everything's stolen from somebody yeah. at some point. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> I'm not giving people credit. Come on now. Don't go to philosophy unless you're going on my show. Uh, yeah. So it's like I think a lot of people will see that, but I think the only way to be truly good at many different things is to segment like you're talking about. And I think people get the wrong idea, and so they think it's okay to do those things. Yeah. I mean, it's just that quality over quantity. You know what I mean? That's the it's key like, word: is quality, man. It's like uh, you know. That's it. I mean, I, the big tip there, I think, is what what you mentioned is getting rid of the phone. Like, if you if you're going to dinner with your wife or something, leave the phone in the car. Problem solved. Yeah. Now, now, now you can't screw it up by by checking your texts and getting an email or getting a phone call. It's in the car. It's like the best diet tip ever. If you need to lose weight and you start getting hungry, what do you do? You brush your fucking teeth. You're not gonna eat cake with with fucking yeah. mint mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Brush your teeth. Right. Like just get it. <laughs> I already brushed my teeth. I can't do it. Yeah. But you know, I, <laughs> you eat chocolate cake after brushing your teeth. That's not that, what I thought that, you were going to say. I thought you were going to be yeah. like, don't buy cakes. Yeah. <laughs> but you went with the brush your teeth route. <laughs> Put a cake in the middle of your kitchen but and then listen, go brush your teeth. But listen, That's right. No temptation But listen, there. Doug, sometimes, look, sometimes you're going to go to work, like in that corporate environment, there's going to be fucking cake there. Oh, yeah. And look, you can turn down the, the homemade tiramisu your coworker made that's looking you down and staring you up and down. Well, you can mm-hmm. brush your teeth. Fuck, all right, I guess genius. So we got, yeah. we're all lucky. <laughs> CTP's dying over here. But, uh, so Chris is the only one with a real job in this room, I think. That's right. So he's Uncle he's corporate, got he's got the temptation always. Corporate keyboard him. monkey. Hello. We, we do have a pastry chef at our gym who occasionally will get an order for like a thousand cookies and then like oh, it'll yeah. get canceled and she'll just bring like four boxes of cookies into the oh. gym and then then, yeah, the, let me then see they're just there. Then. I'm okay. like, push, yeah. work out. Cookies. <laughs> you know, and that's another thing about nutrition. Let's talk about that for a quick second. Like, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Like, Word. It's like, here's another 
like pet peeve of mine in the CrossFit community or in the community in general. It's like people just take that shit way too seriously. They need to calm down. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, 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 and it goes back to that quality of life thing. You know, don't be that guy who is so on your diet that you show up to your kid's birthday party. You're not going to have a piece of cake with your daughter because you're on a paleo diet for the rest <laughs> of your life. It's like, take a break, right. eat a slice of cake. I promise you, you'll still be just as fit as you were right now tomorrow and you know it kind of goes back to that whole thing i like, tell myself that too much yeah <laughs> i mean you it's gotta just have this one time i mean i haven't had you know a piece of cake since yesterday yeah <laughs> but i mean i think you know what i see is is people just they hear that you know paleo zone like yeah that's great mm -hmm. and you should eat clean you should eat well you should eat real food like no question about it but you also should take that time to to um not take it so seriously just like crossfit you should come into the gym and you should do functional movements at high intensity. Mm -hmm. We know it works. You should eat real food because it works. But, you know, sometimes you need to take a rest day at CrossFit. Sometimes you need to take a chill break when it comes to eating. Mm -hmm. And you need to go out with your wife. You need to go have a good time. And if you have dessert, oh my God, just do it. How often do you cut loose? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> <laughs> is that quantifiable? Like, is that every day? No, I mean, you know, the way I like to think about it is I don't eat much. I don't eat as much as people would think. Mm -hmm. I eat a, you know, decent breakfast, really nothing throughout the duration of the day, and then a pretty big dinner. That's just the way I roll. Uh, what's, a, what's a typical day? Like, what's a typical breakfast, I guess? Kid, t typical breakfast, you know, I like going to Whole Foods. We have Whole Foods here. Uh -huh. A couple eggs, a couple pieces of bacon, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, maybe a couple tater tots. You know, that, that's about it. Nothing huge quantities, because when I eat huge quantities, it, it makes me sluggish. So I like... Those little organic, locally sourced tater tots? <laughs> <laughs> you know... Yeah. Vegan, <laughs> vegan t tater tots, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, just something like that that just kind of kickstarts the day. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll have some coffee, sometimes not. It just depends. Um, I have an allergy to dairy. And so uh, I, I won't, I'll just drink black coffee. And, um, you know, then the day goes on. Um, I like having like a perfect foods bar, which mm. like this bar, or, I like it. It's called a perfect foods bar mm. um, before I go out and work out. Is, so that, like, is that zone paleo? Uh, I'm, I'm kidding. No, I'm of course. It, actually, shops, man. it might be paleo. It has honey in it, whatever. So like in the morning, I'll do some cardio Somebody's type stuff before, before I go and now. have breakfast. I'll have breakfast. Then later on, I'll, you know, I'll be doing a bunch of work, whatever I'm doing. Then I'll have a little bit of half this bar. Then I'll train really hard. Then after I'm done, I'll have some type of like, you know, I'll have like a progenic shake or whatever. And then, you know, a little after that, I'll have another bar. And then I'll come home later on that night and I'll have dinner. But mm. throughout, like, you know, I'd say from <clears throat> nine in the morning until five o'clock at night, the only thing I'm eating is probably one total bar and maybe a protein shake just because I'm busy with different things I'm doing and if I eat too much, I feel really sluggish and so I can't train. You're training, you're training several times a day. Is that like you're drinking several post-workout shakes or how? No, I mean, I, I probably have like one of those a day. Um, you know, it's like in the morning, my, my post-workout thing is gonna be my actual meal, my uh -huh. breakfast. Yeah. And then after like my noon session is when I'll have a post-workout, like the progenics. So you'll, you'll train before breakfast. And yep. then, then, then you go get your breakfast. I got you. And then I'll train at lunchtime. And then I'll train at dinner time. And then, so then I'll come home, do something, and then I'll eat dinner. But it seems like it's another example of you're not overanalyzing this shit. That Look, I don't feel like eating, so I won't. I'll get some work. And when I feel like eating, I'll eat a good meal. And that's it. You know, if I get busy and I go more than three hours without eating a meal, the world will not stop. My body will keep working just fine because it's made for such things. It's not yeah. made to eat consistent at meals every three hours that are perfectly balanced. That's bullshit. Yeah. No, yeah. that's exactly right. I'm going to eat when I'm, I'm going to eat when I'm hungry. And if throughout the duration of the day, if I feel like I'm busy and I'm not really paying attention and I, uh, that's fine. But because more times when I eat too much, I just feel really sluggish. Like I can't yeah. eat a lot and function. I just feel like I'm going to fall asleep. So instead I just have nice, small, you know, little snacks and I'm good to go. Is your dinner super huge? Yeah, what's super your huge, the, you know, super huge might be an what's exaggeration. What's the girth on your dinner? I mean, all, <laughs> you know, mainly at dinner, you know, my wife cooks, you know, fish, chicken, steaks, um, you know, all at once. This is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, you know, like Every a day. fist, you know, like a fist or a little bit bigger of some type of protein. And then, uh, well, some type of carbohydrate, I mean like vegetables or sometimes like some rices, uh, maybe some potatoes, some normally mainly like some vegetables and then I'll have some fat in there, some type of stuff, but Nothing, nothing too crazy, you know, like just like yeah. a good meal. And then probably before I go to bed, I like having like almond butter, a little bit of honey. Cool. Yeah. I, I just want to put this, throw this out there. It's like, we've interviewed quite a few athletes and everyone's kind of got the, a different routine. 
So I, one thing I would caution people against is like just taking exactly what he did and try to apply it to you. Oh yeah. Like like it sounds like you're doing this very intuitively. It's an intuitive eating and so it might be a good idea to try to keep it paleo-ish with some intuitive eating especially and not if try you're to dummy, force, right? your, force yourself into someone else's if dietary you're dummy, program your intuition might be flawed get somebody to check your intuition and calibrate it then go go use that intuition once you're smart enough yeah actually i think it's good to go <laughs> into the extremes like maybe do like a 30-day paleo challenge yeah, just and feel. then and then when you come out of that like you, you're it, it kind of tunes your intuition a little bit well, i mean here's the thing right your body's your own lab and just like we're a lab in terms of CrossFit gym, and I'm trying to you know, look at inputs, look at outputs, right? That's what we do in CrossFit. Same thing with food. You gotta look at your inputs, look at your outputs. You know, if, you don't, if you've never zoned before, you should try it. Yeah. If you've never gone full paleo, you should try it and see how you feel. And I've done that, right? Like I've done full zone, I've done paleo. I've been doing this a long time. And I found that this is the best thing for my body because I feel good throughout the duration of the day. Now, some people might say like Matt Chan, for example, he eats 100% strict paleo, eats way more fruits and vegetables than I do. And that's the way he likes to perform. And all respect to him, but that's what he's found works well for himself. And so just like anything, you got to look at your body like a lab and test the results. Mm-hmm. It, but you got to give it a couple of weeks. You know, try something, try it, try it, try it. Like take out gluten, yeah. take out dairy. How do you feel? You know, like for me, if I eat dairy, my nose is going to get stuffed up and I'm not going to be able to breathe very well because I have an allergy to it. No cocoon for you? Uh, no cocoon for me. <laughs> Actually, I, I've got I the same just... problem. Allergic to casein, yep. cow casein, but if I drink goat milk, perfectly fine. Really? Yeah, I might want to try that out. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, and and like gluten is the same thing. It's like some people get really bad gut problems with it. For Mm -hmm. me, it's fine. So I've taken it out. I've put it back in. Nothing changed. So it's all good. Yeah. So I heard before we came out here that that you were like super high energy all the time. And like to get you to like stand here and do a podcast for an hour would be like impossible because you're just like all bouncing off the walls all the time. And I haven't gotten that impression at all since we've been here. Is that is that just like the, the two people that told me that they just don't know you very well? Or is that like a thing? Or are, are you normally more, more energetic than this? <laughs> I was I was expecting different. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Yeah, I heard you were just like I heard you were like a maniac. Jason, I didn't hear none of this bullshit, man. What is this garbage? I heard you didn't even win the two (laughs) thousand. Yeah, that's a rumor. Started on Instagram. Yeah, you know, I think, I, I mean. For the most part, like when I get in, like I think some people get that impression from when I'm doing like CrossFit workouts. It's mm-hmm. so like, like it goes back to that thing. Like if I'm ready to work out, and if I told myself at one o'clock I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna hit that shit. Mm-hmm. And if anybody else is with me, I'm gonna be running around and making it happen. If you're with me, you're with me. If you're not, get out of my way because I got an hour to hit this or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So some people sometimes might perceive that for like I'm just crazy, but it's more like that efficiency piece. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this for this round of time. At two o'clock, I got something I got to go to. So I'm getting in the amount of work and you know, they, they sometimes see that. But you know, generally, I'm, I'm a pretty high energy guy, but I could definitely sit here and talk for you know, 45 minutes or an hour. <laughs> Any longer, I might be walking around in circles or something like that. <laughs> awesome. Well, before you start walking around in circles, let's go ahead and end it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I, I, I feel like we, same part, thing. we need like a part two, three, four, five with Jason. Yeah, you know, I think, I think so. Some more time. I'll do this again. We got if you, when you got come out and see uh, Rich, we can just maybe hook up and do a big fucking ridiculous episode of the show with everybody on that bitch. Yeah, me and him. So like uh, we were we were chaining back emails for Team USA, and we're like, hey, we got to put together a practice. And so we have some we have girls on our team, we have, we have guys on our team. And so Chan is our coach. And he's like, hey, you know, the girls can't make it out. Do you guys still want to do this? And I just wrote back. I said we go there, we shoot some shit, and we uh, and we work out a lot. And like all the guys just wrote back, deal. Like, bro. Yeah. And it's like, bro, hard ons. Yeah. I mean, you know, so I was talking to Rich, and he's like, hey man, it's deer season. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, you want to go hunting? I was like, I don't know, man. So I texted him, I said, I don't know. We should take you guys hunting, and then CTP will go around the camera, and we'll we'll watch you just, you know, sort of get into a deer with a big buck knife or so, with like a big so I've never, knife. I've never done any of this before. So I texted never hunted? Nah. So okay. I texted him back, I was like, hey man, I was like, I don't know if I could do that. And he goes, what do you mean you don't know if you could do that? I was like, I, I just don't know if I could do that. Like, I've never killed an animal before. And he's like, he, are you he's, fit or what? Like, no, like he's just like, like sitting there. Voice. He's yeah. like texting me, he's just shocked. Like, he's just like, you shouldn't like, like, like you're joking, right? How like, is this possible? Like, right. I don't understand how you're having this dilemma right now. Like, damn. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, maybe we start off with a turkey or a duck or a pigeon, or something. <laughs> <laughs> and we work our way up. I'm kind of like you though, man. I've never, I've never killed uh, a mammal with a weapon. 
really ever. I, I, that's not something I've done. I never, I, I never fired a gun. Still, this guy's tried to take me like fifteen times. Just so I've done so, it. Something, something always seems to come up anytime yeah. I try to take him shooting. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. By the time I turned third, I got comfortable taking the hook out of a fish's mouth. Does that make me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ooh, it's slimy. <laughs> Dad, come on, take the hook out. <laughs> hey, my worm. Man, we were, we were in Kenya, and uh, so we were in Kenya, and I brought a bunch of our crew there, and we were, we built two schools in Kenya last year. Yeah. So we get there and we're like talking about playing, talking a big talk, like, hey, you know, this is gonna be like third world stuff, like we might have to kill our own food, stuff like that. <laughs> and so all of us are sitting there we're talking big talk, like, yeah, I'm down to do it, I'm down to do it. So we get there and they're taking us to the village and there's there's this like basically this I don't know, container of goats. And like they're like, all right. So the villagers here never see meat. They eat meat probably once a year. So if you buy them, the goats are pretty expensive, like, I don't know, 50 or or $100, which to them is, like, absurd. Might as well be a billion dollars to them. Right. And so they're like, hey, if you want to buy one, you can buy one. You can buy two. You can buy as many as you want, but you have to kill it. And so we're sitting there, and we're looking at, like, these goats, and, like, we're walking around with them. And like, so who wants to do it? And they pull out a knife, like, to slit the throat. And <laughs> it's like so Lord we, of the Flies moment. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, so the whole time, we're, like, on the play, we're talking big talk. Yeah, we get down there. We're going to, you know, be, like, just like the locals and do a jacket. <laughs> so we're sitting there and all of us just look at each other and none of us were, were down. And uh, so none of us none of us did it. And so we didn't buy any goats because we didn't want to kill it. But I just thought it'd be funny. Like it was almost twofold. Like, yeah, we looked like a bunch of pussies, but at the same time, <laughs> it's like, what if one of us was like, yeah, me, I'll do it right now. You're kind of like, I don't know if I want to sleep next to that guy. That's right. The rest of the group, right. the of the group forever is like, man, uh, Jason's a little, he's a little weird. Yeah, that guy, uh, I don't know about him. Yeah. <laughs> this is a great scene. I'm sharing a hotel room with that guy. It's a great scene on Anthony Bourdain's show. He's down in the, the bowels of Louisiana and they're going to have a big, like, uh, pig roast which is so awesome but they ha- they're starting with a live pig that they've raised all year and had this big party and they go well you're our guest this is my best Louisiana voice I don't yeah. know let's talk to Kendrick about this shit is this accurate <laughs> you're the guest you do the honors Woo! and I hand up like a pistol he goes I know how this works double tap behind the ears they go right and he goes up pow pow right in the pig's head cold blood just boom they, get, they break out the knives slice it down I'm like holy shit Anthony Bourdain <laughs> yeah. that's how he rolls that's speaking badass. of which Kendrick Ferris is a badass he is. Yeah. I saw he came on train with you, dude. I could talk about Kendrick all day long, man. So shit like, house that guy. He was out in Boston <laughs> with you guys last dude, week. Yes, he was in Boston. So I get off a plane oh, and yeah. I hit this dude up, yeah. and they're like, "Hey, come meet us." So I come over there and I look over there, and all these dudes are just squatting, and Kendrick's just squatting like you know 500 for reps. Yep. So I walk in right off the plane. I was like, "Fuck yeah!" I was like, "I'm in." So we go over there and we just have a little bro session, and so he gets up to like <laughs> 590, hitting it for reps. Yeah, dude, I've like, seen some videos of him lately. Dude, over 600 for dude, reps. Six, what? It's world, it's world class. No one in the world is, is, is squatting as much as him Dude, and his weight class. I don't it think. was bizarre. And like, and like <laughs> my favorite thing about him is like, I'll be squatting. I think I was moving up to like the high 300s, like 365, 395. And I was doing it for reps too, like with him. Mm-hmm. Obviously I wasn't as heavy as him. And, uh, you know, like I was struggling coming out of the pocket, like on my fourth and fifth rep. And he's like, get out of there, get out of there. <laughs> and like the way he says it, just like, he's not like, get out of there, get out of there. He's just like, get out of there. Like it just like his his like, you know like he's sending belief into you. Like, yeah, that's exactly there, right. Like like get, get out of there, man. Get out of there. Wait, and was like, that the Instagram like man squatting nothing but getting out of there, not being afraid of the shit? Yeah, he's not. <laughs> he's not. Uh, you know, trying to be a cheerleader. He's just trying to inspire you just a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and, and that's all it took. Like he just like here's this dude who's squatting six hundred for reps, and he just tells me <laughs> get out of there. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like Sylvester Stallone style. That's yeah, yeah. that's all I need. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you yeah. respect the dude. Yeah, yeah. I had a chief in the Navy like that. Like, he never screamed at anybody or anything. But if he pulled you aside and was like, talk to you low, you're like, oh, shit, this is real. Yeah. So, like, Kendrick's probably the same way. He's like, hey, get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck, I gotta move. I gotta get through. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> punched me. All right, guys. Uh, I think we're gonna wrap this thing up. Part one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, what do you want to promote, Jason? I mean, you got sponsors, promote? or you got NC Labs. Yeah, I mean, we got. Where do you NC- start, Jason? No, we got, we got, we got, the, we got just NorCal CrossFit. You know, NC and the NC Lab, right? And I got a bunch of great sponsors. You know, what I mean, we got Reebok, we got Progenics, we got Rogue, we got Rock Tape, we got, you know, we got a bunch of cool people that help me out. So very cool. I appreciate support all. Support the people who support Jason. Support right. the kindness. Keep the yeah. trend going. All right, guys. Uh, make sure to head over to barbellstruck.com. Sign up for the newsletter. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to go over to iTunes. Give us uh, 10 stars and a positive comment. See you next time. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Jason. <laughs>
Ten stars and a positive yeah, ten stars. <laughs> <laughs> We're not rating up. It only goes up to five. Yeah. <laughs>